So in this video, I'm going to talk about fight, flight or freeze. How I'm going through it, how I'm feeling this trigger right now, how intense it is for me right now and what we can do to go through fight or flight and to overcome it. If you want to learn what you can do to overcome it, to heal and recover from this PTSD BS, stay with me and watch till the end. I have lots of love to give. Breaking news, Kathy Peters is leaving New Zealand. You don't know who that is? That's me! <laughs> okay guys, let's talk about anxiety today and how to work with it and how to overcome it. But first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. The background story. So high school was really painful for me and also before high school everything was just so traumatic and there so many things was just happening at once. Like people dying around me, bullying, being suicidal, toxic relationships, everything was just not cool. Like I connect with my home just pain and trauma and darkness and anxiety and someone that I don't want to be anymore. Someone that I was when I left and someone that I'm really scared of becoming again because I'm going back there. But first, let me tell you how I ran away. So after doing the whole high school thing and finishing that chapter, I decided to move to Spain. I was living in Spain for a while. I just hit the camera. And then I moved to New Zealand and I've been here for almost two years now. And in this time, I had so much time to heal and grow and learn and just overcome so many obstacles in my life. I learned to let go of so many things from my past and learned to accept so many things about me, about the present moment and about life itself. And it's been such an emotional, intense journey with so many ups and downs, so many crazy roller coasters and crazy relationships that I'm just so happy where I'm at right now that I'm really, really scared of going home. Thinking about going home, it's just this massive trigger, like I left and I was this small, fragile little girl, like I was on antidepressants for BPD, PTSD, anxiety, insomnia and whatnot, probably everything. It was so freaking toxic all the time. That girl that was so in pain, so suicidal, cutting herself, screaming, crying. This little girl, I don't want to be her anymore. And I know I cannot deny her and I need to give her love. She's me, I'm her. But I feel like I've become so strong. I've outgrown this old me and I just don't want to move backwards. If I, if I hate one thing, it's moving backwards. And I know recovery is not like this. It's more like, <laughs> what was that? But at the same time, I'm just so scared. I'm so scared of going home. I'm anxious. So, hello home. You know, most people are so excited to go home. They get homesick after two freaking months. I didn't get homesick in two years at all. I feel like when you're traveling, you can invent yourself over and over again and you get so many chances. If you mess up things, then it feels like you can just start over again. You're free. People don't know you. And you can just introduce yourself again without all this, without this heavy baggage from the past, you know? And it's so beautiful, it's so liberating. And I feel like going home back to this, to these dark memories, to my toxic environment, aka family, and to all this German structure, weird BS, it's gonna be really hard. So. In less than four weeks, I have to go home. Home. This is so nerve-wracking because I, I really thought I would have more time, you know, more time to process everything, to heal and recover and to reflect, to let go and learn and grow. I wasn't ready to go home. Of course, I was considering it at times when it was really bad, when I was almost homeless, when I was poor and suffering and going through breakups and pain but at the same time I knew this was just temporary and I would survive it and for some reason I'd rather struggle far away than being comfortable at home because home doesn't feel safe unfortunately 
I thought I might not go home for another few years and now I just get forced to do it and have to face my demons, face my past, face my trauma, which is something that's freaking crazy to me. You know, this feels like hardcore therapy. Like if I was scared of heights, they instead of telling me to go on the second floor of a building, they would tell me to go skydiving and now I have to jump. You know, it feels like I've missed a few steps here and now it's just boom. <laughs> Here I am, you weren't ready, but you gotta jump anyway. Let's just leave, let's just skip that part here and go to straight worst fear. It's like jumping into the tiger's cage and just hoping he's not gonna eat me. Am I exaggerating? Maybe. Am I hypersensitive? Maybe. So, in other words, going home feels like fight or flight, live or die. So, let's talk about fight or flight. <sighs> As you can see, I'm really really nervous about making this video because talking about this already puts me into fight or flight. Like, I'm talking way faster, I'm just so nervous, I'm kind of shaky, I, I don't really break anymore, I'm just all over the place. My heart is beating so fast right now just because I'm talking about this. There's no point in fighting the fact that I need to go home. I need to accept what is and I need to find a way to deal with it and to make the most of it. I know, realistically, no one can take away from me what I learned. No one can take my growth from me. I am the only person that's taking accountability. I'm the only person that's taking accountability and responsibility for me. I'm in charge of myself. But going home to all the people where nothing really changes ever and everyone just lives in their convenient little bubble and if you're the one person that's talking about problems that's talking about the big elephant that's obviously in the room then everyone is telling you that you are the person that's being too sensitive and that you should just harden up that you're the problem that the problem is not existing that you're making it up <sighs> and it's obviously there like the elephant is in the room guys and there's no point in ignoring it and we gotta talk about the freaking elephant, okay? I shouldn't cry, but this was not planned. I feel like when someone cries on YouTube videos, everyone just thinks they do it on purpose to like get more attention or something. So I'm not gonna cry. That's fucking stupid. What I, what I just, that's just stupid. What, what am I talking about here? Oh God. <sighs> It's so hard to talk about something when you're going through it at the same time. You know, like therapists or like people that give you dating advice when they're already over it. People that give you mental health advice when they're already through it. And I'm right here struggling with it and trying to give you advice. So how can I snap out of this? How I can stop spiraling down this catastrophic thinking and just try to maintain calmness and go home with a positive mindset with general acceptance and positivity saying all right i'm gonna go home and it's gonna be fine it's gonna be great actually and i'm so excited to see my family again to see my friends again the people whom i love i'm gonna have an amazing time i haven't seen them for more than two years it's gonna be so great have you felt something like, just me saying these things, even though I'm scared, already make me calmer. That's already been helping me. That's what fear does. If you give it the power, it makes you more fearful. But if you take over control and take action and vocalize positive things, you're in control. You are in control of your fear. Let's dive more into it. Fight, fight, or freeze. I don't want to say it all the time, but it is actually just fight, fight, or freeze. And I'm freeze, by the way. If the lion is in front of me, I don't run, I don't fight, I just freeze. Not very smart, just saying. Fight, flight, or freeze when there's actually no danger is a protection you've built up over the years, a negative coping mechanism that tries to avoid pain in the future by bringing it into the present moment. But instead of avoiding the pain, it gives the pain the power. You're literally reliving the worst case scenario over and over and over in your head. 
your mind doesn't understand the difference between something that's actually happening and something that's happening in your mind. Like, for example, if I'm scared of losing my partner and I'm thinking, what if he's gonna leave me? Oh my god, I'm so scared I'm gonna lose him. Then you're reliving the worst case scenario so many times that every time you're thinking that thought, it feels like you're losing someone. When actually in the present moment, maybe the, your partner is thinking about marrying you, living the life of your dreams with you. You're so stuck in your mind that it influences your present moment. When you're in that state of fight, flight or freeze, you're panicking. And that panic looks different for everyone. Everyone panics in a different way. Sometimes when I panic, I'm screaming. Sometimes when I panic, I'm doing the typical movie thing where I'm like, <laughs> you know, but sometimes I just freeze. I'm just on my bed like a dead fish and people might think I'm just being a dreamy girl, but I'm actually having this internal explosion in my head, this spiraling negative thought pattern that's just destroying my mind over and over again. And it's freaking me out and it makes me stop breathing. And when you don't breathe, your body gets affected and then your heart starts racing, you start sweating and then you're not only panicking internally, you're also having a physical panic attack and all just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. <sighs> That's why you gotta keep breathing, okay? Just keep breathing and breathing and breathing and breathing. So like I said, you get physically affected when you're having a panic attack in your mind when you're visualizing danger that's not actually there. So the best way to get out of it straight up is instead of sitting there and thinking about it and thinking about panicking and thinking about stop panicking and going down and down and down, you gotta get up, move, go somewhere, do something. If it's just a little trivial thing, if it's just going to the bathroom, if it's just having a shower, if you can move, move. And then count down five, four, three, two, one. And then you try to visualize your safe space, the little place in your mind where everything is good and peaceful. I have two safe spaces. One is on the beach and it's sunny and warm and just cozy. And the other one is in a little woody house and there's a fire and everything smells just like wood. <laughs> And I feel at peace in both places. Sometimes I need the beach, sometimes I need the house. Try to find that safe space for you. One really important thing about panicking is that you're not present. You're worrying about the future or the past. So by getting back into the present moment, you can actually stop a panic attack. What are you smelling? What are you tasting? What are you hearing? Get your five senses going and try to just feel what's around you. But the thing is, it's so much harder to practice getting out of a panic attack rather than practicing calmness and presence every day. Practicing it before it happens to potentially even prevent it. Because if you're present, you won't worry about future or past occasions. So practice calmness every day, not just when you're panicking. This will get you to a state that even when there is this tiger in your mind that's that you think is attacking you, but it's actually a cute little cat that just wants to cuddle, then you will still remain calm because you've practiced calmness and presence before. Don't wait for the big explosion to happen to learn how to get out of it. I'm not saying prepare for the worst, but get yourself a strong foundation to know when you can build your roof. Does that even make sense? I don't know. So this is kind of a prevention of helping me to not go back to negative self-belief systems that I had when I was at home, that I was programming when I was still in Germany. If I keep saying those positive belief systems that are good for me and healthy, that keep me up, then I won't go back to the negative self-belief system. So this helped me to detach from the emotions that could be triggered, the negative belief system that could be triggered again that I had in the past when I will go home. So I can grow and learn and face the issues that I ran away from in the first place. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I didn't expect that it was gonna happen so soon, but maybe this is gonna skyrocket my growth and my mental health. Maybe this is gonna be inner peace. Who knows, man? Who knows? Remember that girl five minutes ago 
being anxious. Yeah, right now I'm calm. Because I'm visualizing the good things that could happen. This is a great chance for me to make peace with my past and to make peace with my home. I cannot change what happened to me and I can't change where I'm from. I used to hate saying that I'm German and I used to hate home, where I was from. Like, isn't that sad? Hating where you're from? I need to forgive home. Empower yourself. Give yourself a big hug. If that's what you need, do it. Go for it.